Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here live in England with James Jacob Prash. Uh, Jacob, uh, one of the believers had a question based on Leviticus 18.22. Have the laws against homosexuality been abolished along with other laws such as those against eating pork? First of all, we have to draw a distinction in our view of the law, that is the Torah. We have the Levitical portions dealing with temple sacrifices, which foreshadow the sacrifice of Christ and so forth. Then we have the purely legal portions governing moral law, social law, everything from public health to education. That is the Deuteronomic legislation. Then in addition to those things, the, the moral law, we have ritual law. So there's a juridical portion, a ritualistic portion that that is Levitical, and the distinction must be made. We've stated multiple times, the only contents of the Torah that is fulfilled in Christ that are obligatory for Christians to continue to observe are the ones reiterated or restated in the New Testament. Apart from Saturday Sabbath, nine of the Ten Commandments, for instance, are reiterated in the New Testament. Hence, moral law is reiterated, not ritual law, not the public health law. Those things are different minor exception of eating food, sacrifice to idols, strangulation, and the consumption of blood. Those are reiterated. Kushrut is not. Christians are free to eat lobster, free to eat shrimp, free to eat pork chops, etc. Uh, it's a matter of personal choice and conscience whether they do so or not. We're not under those aspects of the law that are not reiterated in the New Testament. Concerning homosexuality, however, it is reiterated in the New Testament as a moral legislation. In Romans chapter 1, it is forcefully, forcefully condemned. Same as it is in the Torah. There are those who are attempting, even within certain evangelical circles, to say, well, we're no longer under the law. Jesus fulfilled the law. We can eat pork now. We can eat shrimp now. So we can be homosexual now. This is a complete, complete deception, and a flagrant one. And it's additionally, it's unmitigated ignorance. All you have to do is read the New Testament on its own merit to see that homosexuality is still viewed as a moral perversion and something that is unnatural, according to the God who designed sexuality, according to the Creator. No, you cannot make this argument, and be careful of people who are trying to do so. It's something from the Old Testament, the law, the Torah, the Pentateuch, is reiterated in the New Testament. It is compulsory for Christians. Things that are not reiterated are not compulsory, but when it is reiterated, it is compulsory. Remember, we are not under the law of Moses, but according to 1 Corinthians 9, we are under the law of Christ. How do we explain this? The way we usually explain it is like this. If someone was a Canadian or an American and they drove across the border from Montreal to New York or from New York to Montreal, they cannot say once they get into Quebec, into, in, in, into Canada, well, now I can drive as fast as I want and I can go through red lights. I'm not under the law anymore. No, no, no. In the United States, you can make a right turn on red unless otherwise posted. In other countries, you cannot. Some laws are the same between countries and some are different. Well, it's the same with the relationship between the old and new covenant. Some laws are the same, some are different. There is a law of Christ the same as there is a law of Moses. The law of Moses was fulfilled by Christ. But its moral provisions and certain other elements are repeated, reiterated in the New Testament. 
we interpret the Old Testament in light of the New Testament revelation of Christ. Homosexuality remains forbidden, deemed as a moral perversion and an unnatural practice. Now let me point out that before coming to faith in Jesus, I was addicted to drugs. I was strung out on cocaine as a kid. On top of that, I smoked marijuana daily, large amounts of cannabis and various other drugs, but certainly cocaine. My drug addiction would have put me in hell if Jesus didn't save me and deliver me. I don't think I'm any better than a homosexual or a bisexual or an alcoholic or in anything. The same Jesus who forgave me can forgive them. If you were a homosexual or a bisexual, the same Jesus who forgave me can forgive you. And the same Jesus who gave me victory over my addiction to substance, to a substance, cocaine in my case, the same Jesus who gave me victory over the substance to which I was addicted can give you victory over the unnatural lifestyle to which you are addicted. There is victory in him. But the sin must be recognized as what it is. It is wrong. It'll put you in hell. Jesus does not hate you. He hates what you do. Because he loves you, he hates what you're doing. It's destroying you. It's not his will for you to go to hell. He doesn't want to put you there. He came and was nailed to the cross to pay the price for what you did, dying in your place so you wouldn't have to go there. Please do not go there. Realize what you're doing is wrong and ask him to forgive you. He will not turn you away. And he is greater. He who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. The same Jesus that gave me the power to overcome cocaine can give you the power to overcome homosexuality. I know former homosexuals, bisexuals, and lesbians well, Jesus transformed their lives miraculously. He did for them what he did for me. I'm no better than you are. In fact, I'm as bad as you are. My righteousness is not my own. I have none. My righteousness is Jesus, and he wants to be your righteousness too. Turn to him and ask him to forgive you and to give you the power to stop destroying your life and your soul. He will not turn you away. He loves you and he wants you. He doesn't want to reject you. Please stop rejecting him. He's waiting for you. He has the power. He will give you a new life, a new sense of love. I don't say it will not involve a struggle. I don't say it will always be easy, but there is victory at the cross and there is victory in the resurrection. You need to come to a saving faith in Jesus. He's waiting for you. I don't care how homosexual you are. I don't care if you're a transvestite, transgender, bisexual. I don't care. And he doesn't care. He can forgive you and he can give you a new life and a new identity. The one you have now is going to lead you to hell and he doesn't want you to go there. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you for your question. Blessings to your friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, a questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through 
Kendall. Kendall. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Memorial Catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.